So this is uh, the setup for experiment 14, spectroscopy of the cobalt-2 ion. And the first thing you're going to do is, um, when you come in, you'll have already calculated how much of the cobalt-2 nitrate hexahydrate you need to dissolve in a 50 mil volumetric flask with DI water to make, um, make about 0.15 molar solution. So you have this done, you'll figure out about how much you need to, to weigh out. You weigh it out, put it on some weighing paper, add it into your 50 mil volumetric flask, which you'll get from Brian. Notice, by the way, that this is 50.00 milliliters. And then you're going to add some DI water to it, oh, fill it about halfway or so, um, to dissolve the cobalt-2 nitrate hexahydrate. After you dissolve the cobalt-2 nitrate hexahydrate in the, in the water, then you're going to fill it to the line. Remember, the bottom of the meniscus touches the top of the line with deionized water, and this will be your stock solution. Next, you're going to fill a burette with your stock solution, first rinsing it with a few milliliters, just like we did last week, and you're going to add to some test tubes some of your stock solution. You're going to have six test tubes. You should use the small test tubes that have the white oval on them, gonna, and you should label them test tube number 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. The number on the test tube is how many milliliters of the stock solution you'll add to that test tube. So no stock solution added to test tube 0. To test tube 1, you're going to add 1.00 milliliters of the stock solution. Remember, the burette measures two places past the decimal. Test tube 2, 2.00 milliliters of the stock, 3 milliliters, 4 milliliters, and 5 milliliters of the stock. Next, you're going to take a different burette. Rinse it a few times with deionized water, fill it with deionized water, and then you're going to add deionized water to, to the same test tubes you just put the stock solution in. So that you put enough DI in so that you have a total of 5.00 milliliters in each of the test tubes. So in test tube 0, because you put none of the stock solution, you're going to add 5.00 milliliters of DI. Test tube 1, you're going to add 4.00 milliliters of DI, 3, 2, 1, and 0 milliliters of DI. Next, you're going to take test tube number five that has just the stock solution in it, and you're going to re read its absorbance in the spec 20, which some of them look like this, some of them look a little differently, but you're going to do the same. You're going to use basically the same procedure. Um, you're going to set the wavelength to 430 nanometers, pop test tube number five in, and read the absorbance after you calibrate it. I'll show you how to calibrate it in lab. And then you're going to take, and then you're going to Take test tube 5 out, set the wavelength to 460 nanometers, um, calibrate it again, pop test tube 5 back in, read the wavelength, and so on, all the way up to 610 nanometers. Um, next, you're, you're going to have to plot your, the data that you just got um, in order to find what we call lambda max, that is the wavelength of maximum absorption. Um, I'll show you how to do that in the calculations part of this video. Once you find the lambda max, you're going to set the wavelength of the spec 20 to that, calibrate it again, and then you're going to read test tubes 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Without changing the wavelength, you just pop them in, read the absorbance one after the other, and then you're going to take your unknown, which is also in a small test tube like this, pop it in and read the absorbance. Then you're basically done the experimental portion of the lab. The rest are all calculations. Now for the calculations for experiment 14. The first thing you're going to have to calculate is, which you actually have to have this done before you come to lab, is you have to calculate about how much cobalt to nitrate hexahydrate you're going to need to weigh out to make a solution of cobalt nitrate, cobalt to nitrate that's about 0 0.150 mole. Because the solution that you're making, you only really care about the cobalt in it, the cobalt-2 ion, which is what we're looking at. I'm just going to write cobalt-2. But what you're weighing out is cobalt-2 nitrate hexahydrate. So you want it to be about 0 0.150 molar, moles per liter. And you're going to make 50 mils, which is 0 0.05000 liters. So that 0 0.05 liters times 0.15 moles per liter tells you you need 0 0.00750 moles of cobalt-2 ion, which means you need 0 0.00750 moles of cobalt-2 nitrate hexahydrate. Again, because there's one cobalt-2 ion and one cobalt-2 nitrate hexahydrate, the moles of cobalt-2 ion that you need is the same as the moles of cobalt-2 nitrate hexahydrate you should weigh out. 
times the molar mass of cobalt 2 nitrate hexahydrate. Make sure you include the six waters when you find the molar mass. It tells you about how many grams of cobalt 2 nitrate hexahydrate you're going to want to weigh out to put into your 50 mil volumetric flask. So this is one thing that's going to have to go in your table of constants, the molar mass of cobalt 2 nitrate hexahydrate. Next, once you actually weigh out the cobalt 2 nitrate hexahydrate, you have to find out how many moles you actually put into your 15 mil volumetric flask. So you, this is how much you weighed out. Remember, this is how much you calculated you should weigh out approximately. This is how much you actually weighed out, and they're probably going to be different numbers. And divide by the molar mass of cobalt 2 nitrate hexahydrate, same number as this here. And it tells you how many moles of cobalt 2 nitrate hexahydrate you weighed out into your that you put into your flask, which is equal to the moles of cobalt 2 ion in there. So now the concentration or the molarity of the cobalt 2 ion in your stock solution in your 50 mil volumetric flask is equal to the moles of cobalt 2 nitrate that you weighed out divided by the volume, which is 0 0.0500 liters at more. Next, you're going to have to calculate the, con the concentration or molarity of cobalt 2 ion in each of the test tubes, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. For test tube 1, you're going to use, well, for all of them, you're going to use M1V1 equals M2V2, solving for M2. That's the molarity in the test tube, where M1 is the molarity of your stock solution. So for the molarity, the concentration of cobalt 2 in your test tube 1 will be the volume that you added to the test tube, which is 1.00 milliliters, divided by the total volume after you diluted it, which is always going to be 5.00 milliliters here, times the molarity of your stock. This is which you calculated right up here. So the concentration of cobalt 2 ion in test tube number 2 is just 2.00 milliliters over 5.00 milliliters times the concentration of your stock. The same number here, here as is in here. And then you do the same thing for test tube 3. The only difference is that for test tube number 3, it's going to be 3.00 milliliters. For test tube 4, it'll be 4.00. And test tube 5, well, 5.00 over 5.00. You don't really have to do that one. Um, so you notice that it's always 5.00 in the denominator here. V1 over V2 times M1. Next, the graphs which go in your calculations section. The first one is absorbance versus wavelength. Absorbance on the y-axis, wavelength in nanometers on the x-axis. Um, you can't scale it yet because you don't know what your absorbance readings are going to be. But on the x-axis, the the lowest wavelength is going to be 430, and then you're going to have you're going to um, scale it, you know, evenly all the way up to 610 nanometers, which is the the longest wavelength. Then you're going to plot absorbance, you know, your absorbance versus your wavelength. This is where you use just test tube number five and you change the wavelength each time. You're going to plot, you're going to plot the nine points and draw the best fit straight line. Please don't draw it like I did by hand. Use a straight edge and draw the best fit straight line. That's going to be your plot for, um, oh shoot. No, I take that back. I, I messed up. That's, this is not a linear plot and it's going to look, well, it's going to look better than this, but you can plot your nine points and definitely not going to be a straight line. It'll be a curve. So you just um, basically connect the dots. Now, you're going to have to extrapolate, uh, excuse me, interpolate between the two dots probably up here somewhere. So go ahead and keep the curve going and then come down, whatever you think it does. Um, the highest absorbance, which probably won't be on one of your exact points, that point right there, that wavelength, This wavelength right here, that's what we're going to call lambda max. And this is the wavelength that we're now going to set the spec 20 at and do the rest of the experiment at that wavelength. Next, you're going to plot absorbance versus concentration of the cobalt 2 ion. This is when you found your lambda max, set it there, set the spec 20 there, and then measured the absorbance of test tubes 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So, um, again, you can't scale it before you come to lab because you don't know what these numbers are going to be. Um, remember, by the way, keep um, at least a half of a page of your, your graph paper um, for each of the graphs. They have to be at least half of a page. Absorbance has no units, by the way. That's why there's no units over here. But make sure you put the units on them for the concentration of cobalt 2 and for the wavelength. So this is the one that's going to be a straight line. So you, 
Um, you're going to plot your points, draw the best fit straight line. Again, not like I did, please use a straight edge. Draw the best fit straight line through the points, and that's going to be your curve. Next, you're going to find the absorbance of your unknown that you measured in the spec 20 on your y-axis. Draw a dashed line straight over until you cross this line here, the best fit straight line that you drew. Again, drop a dashed line straight down where that line touches the x-axis. That's the concentration of cobalt 2 ion in your unknown, which is what you're trying to find. And finally, um, you're also going to calculate the concentration of cobalt 2 ion in your unknown using what's called Beer's Law. C is a concentration, A is the absorbance that you read from the spec 20, and epsilon and B are, are constants. Where you're going to get epsilon and B is from the slope of this line that you drew right here. Because this is the equation of a straight line, y equals mx plus b, where the y-intercept is 0, m would be epsilon b, which is the slope. So you're going to find the slope of this line. Remember, slope is rise over run, or y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Again, don't choose points that you, you plotted. Choose points on the line, one up here somewhere and one down here somewhere that aren't plots, points that you plotted. Plug them into here for y2, y1, x2, x1. Get the slope. This is supposed to be an m, which is the slope, which is equal to epsilon b. Get that number. Put it in here. The absorbance, the a is the absorbance of your unknown that you measured from the spec 20. And, and you can calculate the concentration that way, too. So you're going to get the concentration from the graph and the concentration from the equation. And finally, the constants in the data sections. For the constants table, you only need one constant. That's the molar mass of cobalt 2 nitrate hexahydrate. In the data table, you're going to have to have a place for the mass of cobalt 2 nitrate hexahydrate that you weigh out to put into your 50 mil volumetric flask. And the absorbance reading for test tube number 5, that's the one that's undiluted of your stock solution, at each of the nine wavelengths when you're trying to find lambda max. And then the absorbance of test tubes numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, as well as the absorbance of your unknown at, once you've found the lambda max, at that lambda max. Now, you're going to work in groups, but everybody does their own unknown, which means that you're going to do the stock solution together, do all the, um, the absorbance readings together, except at the end, once you've found the absorbance of test tubes 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, each person then puts in their own test tube uh, with their unknown in it.